but uh, thinking about what to bring to us today, um, I, I'm, I'm led to read from the book of Proverbs, chapter 24. Um, chapter 24 of the book of Proverbs, and uh, a very kind verse, but I just hope you will understand it in the spirit in which the wise man Solomon wrote it. Proverbs chapter 24, it sounds unkind, and uh, I've also struggled with that thinking, that idea. So as we share this evening, help me in trying to understand it. Help me in trying to, to battle with that thought. Uh, the verse I want to read is just one verse, and that's verse 10. If you faint, in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Other versions will say, if you give up on the day of adversity, you are weak. Proverbs 24, verse 10. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. If you give up hope, oh, on the day of hardship, you are weak. I find it unkind because in the day of adversity, very few of us, almost all of us, we lose strength. It's so difficult to stand on the day of adversity. Yet he, he says that it means your strength is small. You're weak. We are weak. That's a very unkind verse to read to somebody going through adversity. And yet some things that appear unkind could also be unkind to us because they are such a deep truth. So on our fellowship this evening, uh, let's reflect just on that word, adversity. Because the, the word adversity uh, is giving us, it's a picture of an unfavorable uh, misfortune. When things happen that are unfavorable, uh, things that other people call fate, calamity, and uh, distress. And these are hard situations that can come upon our lives. And the Bible has several verses that talk about adversity. Um, adversity can be personal. Uh, you and I can go through adversity. David wrote that psalm when he reflected on it certain adversities in his life like the loss of his son that they had with Bathsheba but also the loss of his son Absalom those are moments of adversity uh, there also could be moments for David when he had to run away to another country because Saul was seeking to kill him and he had to pretend he was a mental person he was he had lost his head so Adversity can be personal. And sometimes you can be, I can be going through adversity and no one knows. Uh, it could be killing me slowly. Or an adversity can sometimes be in the family. It could be a situation, a misfortune, a calamity, a situation that causes distress that is in a marriage or in a family. Adversity can also be communal. A localized community can be going through adversity. Uh, but you can also have a national adversity. Like when we had the bomb blast, when we have had terrorist attacks. Those are moments of national distress, adversity. Adversity could also be global. 
like what has made us to come to the level where we can only do the services virtually like this. There's a worldwide adversity. Just one hour ago, I was uh, watching the news. Uh, somebody's working out there. <laughs> I was watching the news, international news, and I was uh, watching a nurse uh, working in um, Milan, Italy, and she broke down when she began to describe the fact that people are coming to take their dead, and she says, we have released so many bodies, so many bodies. Uh, I was also watching another country where they have turned the stadiums into mortuaries false whole stadiums and their picture of a stadium packed with coffins. So we could be having a global adversity like what we are having today. Uh, World, War, World War I, World War II, these were adversities, uh, especially for Europe. And um, thinking about adversity, sometimes people want to ask what causes adversity? What causes distress and calamities, uh, like the tsunami? Uh, thank God for some of you, my friends, and whom God has used to take me to the next level in ministry. Uh, last year, I was in a, a meeting in Indonesia, in Bali, and they were able to show us the extent of the damage the tsunami caused and the number of lives that were lost and property. So when those countries have that tsunami, that's an adversity. But what causes adversities? You, you remember when Job had his personal adversity, he was asking the question, why? And his friends were trying to give him the reason why he was undergoing that adversity. They brought a sick man to Jesus and they asked Jesus, who sinned? Was it his parents or was it him? Humanly speaking, even as Christians, we ask why. We would like to know the causes. And I want to share my struggle that sometimes we might never know why. Sometimes we might never know the reason why we go through what we go through. You know, sometimes we have done everything right, but something just goes wrong. But whether we like it or not, in moments of adversity, personal, communal, global, we ask why. Uh, prophets are out there, they are declaring that they know the course of this pandemic. Some are saying it's a judgment from God, others are saying it's the end of the world. I don't condemn anyone, but we are all trying to ask the question, why? Or where is this thing coming from? Is it from China? Is it from USA, is it from God? Is it from the devil? If it's from God, we repent. If it's from the devil, we bind. But um, basically, sometimes adversities are a result of the fall of the human being, the human nature. We are fallen creatures right from the Garden of Eden. And when humanity fell, things were never going to be the same again. Adversities remind us about the consequences of the fall. And so that behind the principle of adversity is sin. The world the Lord created was a perfect world. It had no pain, it had no adversities. But sin, not sins, but sin, not sins, sin is a main cause of all adversities. You see, even the world, the earth that God created, came under judgment because of that sin. But we also are aware that adversities can be caused by human behavior and human interference. We are aware that environmentally, some of the environmental disasters that have taken place are a direct result of human activity. We have not taken care of this planet. We have interfered with mother nature, or father nature, whatever you like to call it. So humans are responsible 
for some of the challenges that we face. Even at a personal level, I think I've gone through some adversities that I can honestly look at myself in the mirror. I said, I think I contributed to this. There are certain pain I've gone through because of my own misbehavior. And also Satan can be behind someone's adversity. Like in the case of Job, Satan, the evil one, was behind what Job was going through. And so Satan can be behind it. And we need to be aware and be alive as we walk as Christians to be able to discern. Uh, one of the most interesting things is the verse we normally quote from the book of Job. Job didn't discern that Satan was behind his troubles. In fact, you know, Job never read Job chapter 1 and 2. So he said the Lord gave and the Lord took. Because Job had never read Job chapter 1. If you would have read Job chapter 1, you would have known the Lord did take. But also, apart from Satan, natural circumstances, natural events can cause adversity. Uh, we have things that have happened and affect everyone. Uh, volcanoes erupting, uh, the lakes swelling. We have also had, uh, like we have the pandemic, we have diseases that have just come, can bring adversity our way. But adversities are painful experiences. Actually, when someone or a community or a nation is going through adversity, it's easier to talk about it. We can write about it, we can see it in the news. We can theorize about it, we can philosophize about it, we can even theologize about it. Until one day, it hits very close to home. Until one day, it gets right in the house. That's when you will understand what the Lord say, mean when they say, it has taken my mouth. It's easy to talk when it is at the neighbors. And incidentally, when it's happening to somebody else, we know the reason until it comes home, then all the reasons disappear. And so in moments of adversity, it's wiser for us to feel our voices. It was. And uh, in my youthfulness as a, as a Christian, there are times I've told God, Excuse me, God, you have to explain this. This one you have to explain. But as I grow younger in the Lord, I've realized God owes me no explanation. And He rarely explains things. I've given up demanding explanations from God, He's not answerable to me. So adversities will come, big or small, in all forms, personal, communal, family, national and international adversities will come. Chandrok Nitie. Born again or not born again, situations are coming our way. But if we are going to faint in the day of adversity, then our strength is small. But this evening I want to focus on the fact that adversity will come, but the benefits or we can benefit from an adversity if we understand that adversity can have certain benefits. 
One Bible saint said, it is good I was tested. That's David, the son of Jesse, said, it is good that I was tested. It's good that I've gone through adversity. Another apostle tells us, brothers and sisters, consider it my joy when you go through adversity. That Christians should be happy if they go through adversity. That Christians should seek to learn, should seek to benefit from adversities. Like what we are going through now, globally. We can whine, we can scream, we can bind and lose. But maybe, because our strength is small, but we can turn the light of God on the situation. And we can learn if we know the benefits of adversity. It was good I went through adversity. Our brother Job, I'm sure he never enjoyed what he was going through. But when God was done with him, I suspect Job would have told God, do it again. Increase the temperature. Let me share with you some benefits of adversity. The first benefit of adversity is that adversity reveals and refines our character and personality. Nothing reveals our character than adversity. We are all saints until adversity strikes. We all have faith we sing, jump, and clap our hands until adversity strikes, until calamities come our way. Talk is easy, but when the rubber meets the road, things are different. Israel left Egypt, crossed the Red Sea, dancing, Miriam leading the worship. They were all believers, they were all great guys, they were all awesome, they were all singing and dancing and clapping. We are going to the promised land, we are going to Canaan, hallelujah, glory to God. They quoted all the scriptures, we quote, they quoted all the verses until there was adversity. There was no water, there was no food. They say to Moses, did you bring us here to kill us? We're better off slaving and serving the Egyptians. Moses, what do you think you're doing to us? That's when the rubber meets the road. That is when they could not take it any longer. Their character came out in adversity. You remember God said that I led them through the wilderness where there was no water, where there were venomous snakes, where there was no food. So that I could test you, so that I could find out what is in deep in your heart. Indeed, at the first instance of the adversity, they manifested that though they were in the wilderness, but their hearts were still in Egypt. They desired the flesh pots of Egypt, the garlic, and all the good food of Egypt. It was manifested. Adversity will unveil and reveal our character. And if you are wiser, and if you are, if you are mature, then when this character manifests, it gives us an opportunity to refine our character and personality. The, the reason God allows us to adversity is so that character is revealed and we refine it. How beautiful it is as we go through adversity. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, Lord, I didn't know my heart was like this. You go through adversity in a relationship and the dark forces inside you, the, the, the hidden things that you never knew exist, evil, evil possibilities 
suddenly begin to manifest. Things that you never knew you had, but as a relationship breaks down, suddenly the evil that is lacking on the inside begins to show its ugly head. And then you begin to know that I'm full of bitterness, I'm full of hatred towards the people that I'm relating with. Adversity reveals character. But it helps us to refine. Because if our faults are manifested, then we can correct it. Uh, do you know that, number two, adversity is a purifying agent. Adversity will help to purify us. Perfect example is job. I've done a study on job for the last 20 something years. It's amazing. I've been shocked personally by the arrogance, pride, self righteousness of Brother Job. Chapter 23, 29 and 30 of Job, especially chapter 29, if you read slowly. You cannot believe Job said those words. They are horrible things. In chapter 29, Job is full of arrogance. He talks of some young men who are laughing at him because of his state. And he said, these young men who are laughing at me, their parents were far much below me that their parents could not even eat with my hunting dogs. In chapter 29, you recognize that there are people Job regarded to be below his hunting dogs. In one verse, he says, Who will take the hold of God's shoulder? I want someone to grab God by the shoulder, grab me by the shoulder, take me and God to court, and Job says, I will win against God. In that verse, I think chapter 23 says, God has robbed me of my righteousness and my integrity. You know, he has his own righteousness and his integrity. And then you ask yourself, was it not important that God brings Job down to human level? So the whole process of Job suffering, including the loss of his children and health, was so that God would bring him back to where he should belong. As he goes through adversity and his friends tell him there's a problem with him, he says, no, can you show me my sins? But in the last chapter, he says, I've been hearing about you, but today I meet you, I, I repent in dust. From chapter one, what God had wanted from Job was just that one word, that you may repent in dust. Sometimes you wonder how many of our children must die before God brings us to that level. But adversity is what made the job to say that his hand is heavy upon me, but when he is done with me, I will be as pure as gold. He recognizes that God was taking him through a purifying process. Indeed, it was a long process. Job said everything a human being could say. In fact, in, in my mother tongue, he says, Job, are you going to know you are going to No, what your te. He spoke all that was in his heart. He even said things that nobody should say. And that was a cleansing, a refining process for him. So adversity is a purifying process. It removes the dross, it removes the unnecessary things of our lives, and we remain light and pure. Uh, thirdly, do you know that adversity helps to build our capacity? Look at our brother Joseph. You got a promise that you'll be a great man, a great leader. And shortly after that, he went into adversity, thrown into a pit, sold as a slave, employed as a houseboy, falsely accused by the mistress of the house, gets to prison, he helps a young man in prison, the man forgets about him. 
you can see the ups and downs is going down and down and all the processes you can feel joseph is dying slowly but god was building his capacity for leadership his capacity to forgive people i think when they put him in the pit and were about to bury him he technically died i mean if you're already in a pit they want to pour soil on you you make your last prayers and you wait for your last breath sometimes adversity brings us to the point when you're actually technically dead and sometimes we need to die to self that we may live for christ abandoned in a jail in egypt he had nobody to turn to except god and he built his capacity to work hard to excel in whichever situation as a house boy he excelled uh, as, as a prisoner he excelled and that developed in him a spirit of excellence as a prime minister of egypt adversity builds our capacity when you suffer so much you develop an inner capacity nelson mandela 27 years in robben islands he came out a better piece of a human being those who have never been to robben islands do not have the same qualities that are as refined as that of nelson mandela to be able to lead a nation that is being torn apart by racism shake hands with these people who jailed him and unite the rainbow nation you see robben islands refined him refinement is only possible maybe the other ways but one of the ways is through adversity i don't know why you're shaking and trembling but if you've not gone through adversity maybe that's why you're not refined that maybe yours is coming next but fourthly adversity also reveals our weaknesses we we never know how weak we are until sometimes we get into an adversity that's when you know our limitations peter wanted to walk on water jesus allowed him to walk on water but he had this moment of adversity when he began to sink and his faith disappeared and he cried master help i'm sinking the disciples crossing the sea of galilee and they are caught in that storm they, they were seamen they tried all the tricks of sea they tried to empty the boat of water elisha the translation of the bible they, they tried everything humanly speaking and they tried everything an experienced seaman could do and the boat filled up still they came to the end of themselves they came to wit's end they came to the end of the road they discovered their limitations and they turned to god so adversity will help us know our limitations our weaknesses there's a joke in town that we ended the year 2019 on a bad note we said human beings are not limited and even christians began shouting that human beings are not limited we can do absolutely anything and then come january just a virus just a virus just a virus just a virus one of the smallest things invisible god i mean the virus has simply revealed that human beings are grossly limited it's brought us to our knees our science our medical facilities our, whatever we have invested in our leadership skills have come to their knees it has revealed our underbelly our soft belly adversity reveals our limitations 
which is important so that we don't become heady, we don't become arrogant. You know, dear friends, Job realized his limitations. With his wealth and experience, with his theology, and he was a very learned man in theology, he was limited. Couldn't even understand what was happening to him. And I like the moments when God helps me to know my limitations so that I could lean on him. This afternoon, I was uh, being blessed by Jesse Dixon in his epic song, I Can't Even Make It Without You Holding My Heart. When the valley is so deep and the mountain is so high, Lord, I can't make it without you holding my heart. One of the lines says that, Lord, I used to think I could be whatever I wanted to be. I thought I could do anything, but I've learned. I can't even make one step without you holding my hands. Adversity helps us to know our limitations and increases our dependence on God. And that brings us to number five, adversity normally drives us to seek God and to cry to God. One of my best sons, maybe it's because I'm a man of sorrows and pain and tears, is Psalm 62 and 63. Hear my cry, O Lord. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth shall I call unto you. Lord, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been to me a shelter in the storm and a strong tower from the enemy. Lord, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Adversity drives us into the arms of God. David, and I've said this somewhere else, that there is a rumor in town, uh, you can confirm it, that David was born out of wedlock. Uh, he was not, uh, his, his two sisters were not daughters of Jesse. He's the only son of Jesse from his mother. And uh, There's a way he was a son of Jesse and yet he was not born out of wedlock, sort of. He never talks about his father, or his, his, his mother rather. But in Psalm 51, he gives us a leak and he tells us that he was conceived in sin and born in sin. The only reference he makes to his mother is that, Lord, the day I was brought forth, I was thrown into your arms. From birth, he was handed over to God. Because of a life of adversity and rejection, rejected by family, rejected by King Saul in his adversity, he fell in the hands of God. That's why many times you hear him say, as the deer panteth after the water brook, so doth my soul pant after thee. You alone are my shield. To you alone my, shall my spirit cry. When he says day and night, my tears are with my pillow as I cry before God. David, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He, he was a man who was fully dependent on God because of the adversities that he went through. Adversity has a way of pushing us into the hands of God. One day, Jesus Christ, our Lord, also went through adversity in the Garden of Eden. That was the adversity of his time. And it was so heavy on him that he confessed to his friends that my heart is broken to the point of death. I'm almost dying, he told them. And he told God, let your will be done. On the cross, which is the darkest time of his life, he cried, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? Then he said, it your hands, I commit my spirit. He committed himself to the Almighty God. 
That's why the adversity of this corona, this is the greatest time to turn to God. What a great opportunity to find out the fellowship with the Lord that we lost in the busyness of life and the pursuit of career, money, and things. You see, dear friends, this is adversity, but it can drive us to the arms of God in a more deeper way. God could be telling us, come back to me in moments like this, so that those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, and they will say of the Lord, the Lord is my refuge and my fortress. In him, in him, in him, in him will I trust. Surely he shall cover with his feathers, and his wings shall you trust. A thousand shall fall on your left hand, and ten thousand on your right hand. You will only see it. Because you have made the Lord your shield and your buckler. Adversity can bring us to God in a greater way. Uh, the sixth uh, benefit of adversity is that it normally helps us to refine our value system. When adversity strikes, we lose the things we thought we valued. We lose certain freedoms, certain addictions, and they become luxuries. Do you know adversity as a way of even resetting our priorities? I'm sure a good number of us can confess that priorities have been reset. We begin to distinguish between the urgent important, the temporal versus the permanent. Adversity is a great thing. Adversity can redefine our lives. And during this time of the COVID-19, it's possible that our priorities and our values will be so well refined that at the end of it, we'll be better people and we'll be greater people. Seventh, you know, adversity also helps us to uh, discover our inner strength and capacity. We might not have known we would have made it this far. People have drawn from within themselves. People have found some energy, some creativity, some, some, some divine deposit that is carrying us through. Things you never knew you could do, you are now doing them. Adversity is great. It helps us to draw from the inner deposit, the wisdom, the strength, the creativity that God had deposited. It comes out in, the, in, in adversity. Thank you. Uh, just three minutes, I'm done. Is that okay? Adversity also helps us develop the inner muscles, our, 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 our inner, uh, how do you call it? The, the muscles, uh, the muscles that, that were hidden, the abilities are developed in adversity. We become stronger in adversity. Like bamboo in winter, bamboo gets stronger and stronger and better in winter. Adversity helps to develop and build the necessary muscle for the next push in our lives, which will be better. I can assure you that by the end this thing, by the time this thing comes to an end, you'll be greater and better and stronger because you have developed a lot of muscle, spiritual, physical, financial, a lot of things have changed in our lives. Adversity will test our friendships and relationships and contacts. We never know who our real friends are until the moment of adversity. Doesn't the Bible say that a brother or a sister is made for adversity? Job knew who his friends were on the day of adversity. Jesus took three guys on the night of his adversity. That's when he knew he could only take John and he could only take James and Peter. In moments of adversity, 
it redefines our relationships, our friendships, and our contacts. Number 10, which is the final one, adversity refines our theology. For Job, he had a new understanding of God. God reveals himself to us in adversity. We begin to understand God, not in a, theoret a, a theoretical way, but God becomes practical. You see, it was in the day of battle that they discovered that it's Jehovah Nisi, the one who fights for us. It, it is when they lacked water and they got water at Mara, the water was beaten, and God healed the water. And they took the water and they were fine that they discovered is the Lord who healeth us. God manifested himself to Job in his moment of adversity. During this COVID-19 season, I'm sure we have had a chance to revise and reevaluate our theology and our thinking and our understanding of God. We have said all the nonsense and we have come back to the word of God. We have tried to find out what is it like, who is God. And the greatest thing that happens in a moment of adversity is the revelation of God. In all this, God wants to reveal himself. You know, if you read the prophets, every time God did something, he said, I've done it so that they may know that I am the Lord. If this pandemic passes without us getting a greater, deeper, and a more marvelous revelation of the Almighty God, then is a lost experience. May we find God. May we discover God. May God reveal himself to us. You know, the end, the last chapter, the last episodes of the life of Job is God revealing himself to Job. That was the whole purpose. It was not about the devil. Yes, it was. It was not all about his character. It was all about God. And so the Lord would like to reveal himself to us. I want us to pray. And as we pray, remember these words that I read from Pilgrim's Progress. God never promised us a good road, but he promised us a better destination. He did promise us a good road, but a better destination. Amen. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord take us through this adversity. May we learn a lot of things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.